everyone. Are you as excited as I am? <laughs> I am so excited to dye yarn inspired by watermelon tonight. This has been highly, highly requested as a dye along theme. And so I am really excited to share this with all of you. Uh, I do have three cameras set up tonight and hopefully things will run smoothly. I do have my iPad so that way I can check out the chat uh, <laughs> when I'm not at the computer that's running the stream. So that way, fingers crossed, things will go well. <laughs> Uh, but before we get started, please make sure that you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. And if you're really excited, give this video a thumbs up. That is a really great way to help support uh, the content here. Uh, hopefully everything is working. Let me check. Make sure that you are subscribed. Yes, it is working. So the microphone that I'm on right now happens to be the slowest one, or slowest, the softest one. Uh, so the audio levels may move a little bit as I move around my kitchen, but we will uh, have a lot of fun. And I need to make sure, oh, there, it's always like, <laughs> Man, I wish the kids were older so that way they could help me with this. But hello, everyone. Uh, I am super, super excited and I am not in focus. <laughs> but yes, I even put on my watermelon dress for the occasion. And yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun. So anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the July 2021 Chemnitz Dialogue live stream. Every month I like to pick out an image that I will use to inspire at least one, usually multiple, colorways on yarn. And this is a dialogue, so I'm inviting all of you to dialogue with me and share your projects that and I will include as many as I can in the recap that'll come out mid-August. I usually wait about a month to give everyone time to dye yarn at home. Now, you are more than welcome to duplicate what I create in this live stream, or you can do your own spin on things. And you're welcome to use any dye types or materials. Part of the fun is to show the range and the variety of yarn people can create based on one photo. And so while you are welcome to draw the exact hues from this watermelon, you can also be inspired by watermelon as a concept and go for slightly different colors. That's okay as well. The goal of this is to have fun with color and for me to challenge myself to try new and different things. So if you would like to submit your yarn, use the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue on Instagram or look for the inspiration photo on the Chemnitz Facebook page and reply there with a photo comment. And then I'll pull um, as many as I can for the recap. And then in the recap, I'll also show my finished dry yarn and give a summary about my whole process. So let's see. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, watermelon watermelon should be super super fun. And I did a lot of uh preparation this afternoon. Uh so, let me see. Let's hopefully things are working. Okay. So, one of the things I did and I'm realizing I should make myself small. I actually did some swatching in advance and I have a little video that I will go through that I'll show all the swatching and talk about all the colors I tried because I wanted to pick out uh, the hues that I want to use tonight. And so I did that this afternoon so that I can make stock solutions and uh, hopefully uh, spend more time working on the colorways. So I was very organized today. All right, now, <laughs> as we jump around the kitchen. I had some fun 
uh, playing and planning out these different colors. Because you, with the watermelon, we could really take this super literally and do like even on a blank, some kind of gradient or eh, gradient asymmetric colorway where you see the rind, the white, um, the watermelon color and seeds. And so I have a couple of versions of that drawn up on that paper ahead. But then I started kind of pulling back and was like, ooh, what would I do if I wanted to create a five mini skein fade set based on watermelon? And so I started sketching that and coming up with five different colorways. So we've got rind all the way through like the first bite, that juiciest tip of the watermelon. And so those are things that I would really, really like to play with today. Oh, thank you. Uh, I like my watermelon dress. All right, so let me make myself small. And let's pull up some bare yarn. See, I told you I was really prepared today. So the yarn that I currently have pre-soaking, immediately above me is some wool to die for titanium sock. This is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It's two ply high twist, one of my favorites for sure. I then in the middle have some of the also wool to die for's, but it's a zebra sock. This fingering weight yarn is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. So it's non superwash, but it is variegated already because this two ply yarn has one ply that's white and one ply that's variegated black with hints of gray and white. And so I thought that just like I picked this base for some Blue Jay inspired yarn, I felt that it would also fit so well for watermelon uh, because that that barber pole really does give that feeling of seeds. And so I thought that we could create something fun on that. Maybe we'll do like a bright version of a watermelon on that base. Uh, and then finally, finally, I have a, on the far right, <laughs> I have a skein of Provincial Tweed, which is a worsted weight yarn from Knit Picks and it's in the color cream. And the naps on this are actually sort of purple and gold, which is really, really pretty. But this yarn is 80% Superwash Fine Highland Wool, 20% Donegal Tweed. Uh, and I picked this one because I thought a tweed yarn would be a lot of fun, a lot, lot, lot of fun uh, for this type of colorway. And... Hmm. Ah, I already briefly showed the pan that has the cooled off swatch in it, but I did want to show I also have a yarn mop that I already did steam set uh, and I have on hand if I need to wipe my hands off, excess dye, and I wiped my fingers on this as I was pinching out the different colors onto uh, the crude swatch. And let me see if there's any other pictures. Oh, that was my face. Well, I'll come over here. I'll come over here for now. So I'm about to show a video, but the swatch above me uh, is a nitpick stroll. So it's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And this was a crude swatch to get a feel for the different hues in a variety of green, pinks, and reds. And the big reason why I like to do this is that colors don't always look like they do on their swatch cards from a company, but I also wanted to see how they looked intense, but also a little more dilute because they, if you take a red and dilute it to make a pink, they can, you can really get a lot of different undertones. And I wanted to get a good match to have a red and a pink that would work together, but not clash or not feel weird and so that was something that i struggled with uh because like oh and let's move this back up i struggled with it because the color of watermelon 
can vary so much from like a dusty, almost more orange pink kind of color to a bright red. And so I was like, okay, I could see myself doing a watermelon in many different combinations. And so picking the ones that fit best for me, uh, and I still left myself with some options. I made a lot of stock solutions this afternoon. Uh, but yeah, I, I left myself with options. Uh, you were thinking you need a pipette or dropper for the seeds. Um, I'm considering doing that. I think it depends on how much water I have in my pan, whether I want to do dry powder speckles or use a concentrated black stock solution with very low water to add little dots of seed. So I'm still uh, like, I'm still unsure with exactly how I'm going to do the seeds. I did not swatch the black up there for obvious reasons. Okay. Um, so that was my yarn mop and all right, let me get my notebook ready so I can go through, um, this time-lapse video where I actually did the swatching and I'll go through all the different colors I used. All of these acid dyes are from Dharma Training Company. And whenever I'm dealing with dry dye powder, I'm always wearing a respirator mask safety glasses and gloves and all the tools and equipment that I used and will be using are dedicated for dyeing yarn and aren't used in the preparation of food. All right, so I started with some forest green and then went into Kelly green and emerald. Kelly and emerald are really similar. Next I did some sour apple and then some chartreuse and radioactive. The chartreuse and radioactive are also really, really similar. For pinks, I did pink orchid, and then uh, some flamingo pink, and then peach blush, which is a little too orange. Then fluorescent fuchsia and amethyst. And then we're gonna go into the reds. And so I did a cherry bomb, then oxblood, then fire red, then, uh-oh, and I'm gonna need to move my face. Uh, I think that's, oh no, that's the wrong thing. I think that's Chinese red and okay. I can't move my face uh, and I don't know how to pause that. Um, <laughs> sorry guys. Okay. So Chinese red was in the center of the top and then poinsettia is behind my head and cayenne is in the top uh, left corner. And so some of the colors did shift as we started adding heat, especially that Chinese red looks very pink at first and then sort of blooms and you get more color. But what I did then at the end, I added some vinegar and some water just to finish it off. And that was, I didn't practice when I made that. That was a little too fast <laughs> for me to speak. But thankfully I have the, uh, not labeled yet, but I have the swatches right here. Um, so, uh, and of course you can't see my pointer. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it's pretty hard to decide exactly how, uh, I wanted to do this. And I will be for the recap, I will label a version of the swatch thing, but if you, I guess, take a screenshot of the video at this point, I believe I have the placement of the colors actually it lines up really, really nicely. But what you can see is just looking at the swatch cards in the middle and compare that to then the hues you see over in the pan from the dry powder. And some things look extremely similar, um, but the swatch cards look different or vice versa. And so that's something that's always really, really interesting to me and something I really, really enjoy uh, playing around with. But ultimately, um, I picked two reds. So I picked a uh, cherry bomb, which is the second row down in the middle. And then I also picked poinsettia, um, which is in the top left hand corner, um, right now. And I would say the cherry bomb is a little bit bluer than the poinsettia, but I liked both and I'll probably, I'll swatch out the dye stocks that I have just to help me uh, finalize how I'm feeling about them. Uh, but I did make dye stocks of both of those reds. 
The problem with those reds <laughs> is that I needed to filter both of them when going into the dye stock container. So Cherry Bomb in solution, it smells a lot like paint and it has really thick globs. This was something that I noticed I think I mixed it up for the one, the graffiti hearts video. And then I had a lot of it left over and I wasn't sure what it was, but it was just behaving oddly. And that was sort of hard to deal with. And so I love the color. I think I prefer using it as a powder versus a dye stock, but reds can be tricky. So there is that. Um, uh, you have, you have no greens, only pale greens. Yeah, you can totally mix a green, totally mix a green. I have some, I think I even have some yellow and blue on hand in case I can't get the greens quite right. There's no reason why you need to have six pre-mixed reds. Like if you look at those swatches, some of them are a little bit bluer, some are a little bit more orange, but they're all very, very similar. And you can shift them a little bit with a hint of blue or a hint of yellow. Uh, so you definitely don't need them all pre-mixed. It's just, I enjoy playing with them. Um, for pinks, yeah, I thought Cherry Bomb, when it blown out a little bit, looked sort of like a more watery watermelon. Um, so for pinks, I picked Flamingo Pink and Pink Orchid, which are the row right above the the green and the two on the right. Uh, the pink orchid is a bit bright, um, but I thought that it was funny. Originally, I thought if I was going to do a bright watermelon, I would use radioactive and fluorescent fuchsia. But I think I actually like the tone of pink orchid and chartreuse more. Um, the chartreuse, when it warmed up, got like a little, the color ended up being a little more even in that section, and I really liked that. I do also have radioactive on hand, um, a really old dye stock of it, but I have some if I choose to use that. Um, oh, Dharma has a watermelon colored fiber reactive dye. Oh, that's awesome. I have not tried adding a ball or like marbles into my stock solution containers. Um, I probably should have done that. Although I don't know if a glass marble is the way to go but because I have a bunch of glass like floral marbles, but uh, yes. Okay, and so then the other greens that I picked, in addition to the chartreuse, which is in the top green row all the way on the left, I picked sour apple, which is the top green in the middle. And then I also got forest green, which is the middle on the bottom. It is probably a little bit too blue, but I thought that layered on these more yellow greens, and if needed, I can add a little bit of yellow to it, would bring a nice depth versus that brighter, brighter green that is in the uh, Kelly and Emerald. So that's what I thought. Um, so you did a two to one bright yellow, brilliant blue jacquard and have a great green for the rind. Um, yeah, that would be a really good one. Uh, I have some, oh my gosh, I think there was a super chat that I totally missed and I don't see it. Oh, maybe because it just showed up. Don, Don, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, Don't use a metal as they will rust. Yeah, I, I wonder more about like a more plastic marble or something. I just worry about like breaking the glass, which I probably wouldn't. Um, but I do have some uh, more green exploration coming up on the channel. Sometimes the stripes on the rim get pretty blue green. Yeah, so that's, that's what I was thinking. So I made a lot of stocks, a lot of stocks today. So we'll have a lot to play with, but this was like the colors that I pulled at the start. I mean, peach blush is so much more orange than the rest, but it also could work for like an orangey watermelon. Like the color of the fruit can vary so, so much. So that just made it all fun. Yeah, that my concern with using glass marbles is if um, you use glass only put one or they will smash on each other and you'll get glass bits on the yarn. I don't want glass bits on the yarn. Nope. Nope. I hate, I 
hate glass. <laughs> I hate broken glass, but one, one would work. Okay, well, we'll see how, uh, how this goes, but let's go up to, let's go over to the stove. Oof. Okay. Let's see. And of course I can't see myself over here, but I'm going to remove this. Uh, should get a new pan. Storing things in my mud room is then I need to rinse everything out. Okay. I'm going to remove this. So there are. Do I use this for something else? Well, there's probably three tablespoons of white vinegar in here. And I might use this. There's. Oof. I'm not sure how much water is in there now. I might use this for some of the colors, but uh, I mean, just as a start for the day, this swatch is like very um, seedless watermelon right away. <laughs> oh my gosh. And since I can see the chat wherever I go tonight, if audio cuts out, please let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Please let me know. Um, all right, now let's go over to the counter. Just a moment. Haha. -ha. Okay, let's make watermelon small. Yeah, so I'm very excited about doing this. Um, mini skein kind of thing and the way i think i would do it is two separate pans one where i'm going to do the two more green focused colorways and then one where i do the pink and red um, and sort of set it up that way that's at least my plan um so we'll see how that goes and we'll buy some other stuff along the way as well but i do have way over here Bring over another skein of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn which is, I'm gonna use as like another yarn mop just to help get a feel of how concentrated these colors are that I've mixed. And I'm gonna have my other yarn mop on deck just in case. Okay, I think that's working. <laughs> uh, yeah, if the sound goes out, let me know. So when I did the swatching before, I was looking at the dry dye powder. And so for some colors, I used a little bit more because I knew they were pre-mixed pastels. And for others, I did a little bit less. So that is something to keep in mind for myself. But let's see, I've got here some chartreuse, which looks pretty good at the 1%. Uh, here I've got some sour apple, which good, those look distinct. That makes me glad. And then I've got some forest green. I actually really like the three of those together and that has me really, really excited. Um, 
Okay, for pinks, and this one might be too intense at 1%. Yeah, that pink orchid is more intense than what I want. But the flamingo pink at 1% might be nearly perfect. The flamingo pink is fairly watermelony at 1% already. Okay, and then over here, we've got poinsettia, which I think I'm gonna wanna dilute also. I don't think I want it necessarily that intense. And then Cherry Bomb, which definitely needs to be diluted. Uh, those are pretty intense, but it's the, the pastel and wickingness of them that works so unbelievably well. But I do think I might just have some abstract fun, but I'm gonna Take a picture of this. Let's see. That's those colors. That is taking a picture of the bottles. We'll see if I remember. <laughs> see if I remember. But yeah, I mean, I think that oof, I like that pink. I don't know which one I want it with. Um, but those colors, they could be diluted a little bit, but they don't need to be. Hmm. Hmm. Oof, I don't know. Okay, let's think, because how am I gonna apply these also? That's the other question that I have not worked out yet. Uh, but I know I wanna work with these colors, but I didn't think about like bringing some other squeeze bottles in. So I think, actually maybe we'll use the turkey baster. Maybe we'll use the turkey baster. And I'm definitely gonna dye by feel more than by, um, I'm planning to dye by feel more than I'm planning to dye by, uh, who's he, what's it? Measurements by measurements. And I can also just pour. The problem with not measuring, though, <laughs> is that when I don't measure, and I should actually start a little smarter, is if I don't measure, then it's a little hard to replicate the color, but yeah, I, I'm not that worried. Okay. So if I did just a dash of the poinsettia, oh, how's that? That's water with just a dash and that I think I could do a second dash. Ooh, that color is so watermelony. That is amazing. And little drips. Get my yarn mop over to dab those up. Okay, so that's that one. What about the cherry bomb? And the thing is, if you go too light, you can always layer more color on it. And I'm not even really stirring these up at the moment. So the cherry bomb, I would say the cherry bomb feels more muted almost. It feels, I mean, I guess it feels less bright. The poinsettia gives like a brighter, brighter pink. Um, and the, oh, that was my poinsettia. The cherry bomb almost feels like it has some brown to it, which is nice, but I think that the poinsettia is in the stock solution is winning for me. Um, let's do this 
some dilutions of the pink orchid. Good morning. Uh, I, oh dear. Totally made a mess. I don't know why I'm un... I should have just been using the, the squirted edge. But this is why I have yarn mops. <laughs> okay, Let, this was some pink orchid. That is pretty bright. It's gonna need more water. But I do like the pink orchid diluted for, see that's still fairly bright. I'm gonna need to dilute the dilution. It's nice, it's a little bit bright, but do I wanna dilute the flamingo pink? The thing with diluting your colors is then you can always make them more intense. You can always add more color, but it's harder to take it away. Oh, that's a really nice babyish, more baby pink. Ooh, okay. I'm liking where we're headed. I'm liking where we're headed with that. Okay. And let me, okay, let me see. I see some questions. Uh, do I plan to try Procam dyes? Um, I, someday, I currently am almost out of space to store dye powder. Um, so the next ones I am going to re review are the Paradise Fiber collection because uh, I asked and they generously shared that with me. Um, I haven't tried pistachio yet. Um, this yarn, this yarn was right in here, was just pre-soaked with, um, it was pre-soaked with vinegar. So, yeah, and I'm just playing. <laughs> because I have, before I go on to the mini skeins, I thought it would be fun to just play. And, you know, it's also possible to dilute the, um, the dyes directly on the yarn. Okay, a healthy squirt of forest green. I can do a little more. Yeah, I just thought that this would be a fun way to uh, check myself. Oh dear. Great, it's not fun when you use a squeeze bottle and everything comes out the top. That is not what I like. Normally the Dharma ones are pretty well behaved, but apparently, not so much at the moment all right and so this is some green apple yeah i like it i like it a bit softer i may like the deepness of the one percent of the forest green but we'll we'll see Because the other thing I always forget is that colors look a lot more intense when they are wet than they do when they are dry. Okay, so a splash of chartreuse. So a lot of these colors are ones that I have not really used before. So that is going to be fun. 
Okay, some do more. Yeah, it's still okay. I, I'm I'm liking where we're headed, and I'm feeling about ready to at, head over to real yarn. But I think what I'm gonna do with this, and this is <laughs> so pretty. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is take a picture, but then I'm gonna flip it over, and we'll keep playing with it. Uh, and when I'm over at the stove and I'm mixing up more colors, I am going to do just like a quick test on here before bringing it over to the stove. And I think, all right, you all vote in the chat. Should we start with the reds or the greens? So we start with the fruit or the rind. And let me know what you think. And that is where I will start playing with this color. But we may do like a bright one on, on something in a bit. And I'm gonna come over and check the chat. So let's see. Um, I'm out of focus. <laughs> uh, Oh, Jamie, I don't always feel like I have a great eye for color, um, which is why like playing with these pictures is really, really, really helpful. So green, rind, green, fruit. Oh, okay, I think I'm seeing more rind. Um, ooh, it's pretty split. Uh, I think... So... Yeah, well, so I'm going to be doing two different pans. Um, I'm going to do one pan that is going to be 200 grams of yarn and then one pan that's 300 grams. And so the 300 gram is going to be like the seeds. It's going to be the pink through the red. And then we'll add black speckles on that. So maybe I should start with the green and do that one second. That seems to make sense. Because you are right. If the reds are going to spread, uh, and plus I want to do the speckles, so speckling should come second. Okay. All right. I am coming over with a tangle. Why are you tangled? There we go. I am coming over with 200 grams of yarn. Oh, funny, this one has like a black thread. There we go, in it. And I am going to want to remove some of the water but I've got one set of five mini skeins down here and one set down here. And I don't know if my camera froze and the camera froze. So I'm going to update the camera. <laughs> this is why it's good. I don't think the audio froze, but this is why it is good. Um, there we go. That worked. This is why it's good that I can see over there. Because I can't always see. All right, but I do want to remove some liquid. And where am I going to put it? Oh, I should use the turkey baster. That would be a much easier way to remove liquid. Still a little slow. 
slow. <laughs> but see, then I have water with vinegar ready to go for when I need it. But I am just removing it like 40 milliliters at a time. I do like to try to reuse water when I can. All right, that's like, let's see. No, I'd like to remove some more. Uh -huh. Everything's cold. I'm planning on dyeing a lot of this cold and then turning on the heat. Because even though there's like a lot of acid in here already, it'll allow me to help some of these colors spread out a bit more. Oh, come on. And another reason why I want the water level to be a lot lower is that we're going to be adding water in with the dyes. But I did want to reuse this dye bath. There we go. Slow and steady wins the race. All right. I'll just have to remember that that is water with vinegar. The audio is, is good? Oh, good. Okay. There we go. So the plan is to have two colors here in this pan. One of the colors is going to be just all in on the greens. And then the other one is going to have a little bit of green, a, a bit of white, but a little bit of green and maybe a little bit of pink. So that is the plan, but we'll see where we actually end up. <laughs> I also don't know how fast all these colors strike, so there is that as well. Okay. So on the one where We've got more of the whites. Just coming in with a syringe and adding little bits of the color. But then I think this is the way that I want to do it. Which one are you? This might be the chartreuse. And it's going to be okay if some color bleeds from here to there. That is acceptable. <laughs> Maybe I do want to turn. I was like, oh, I'll start cold. But we're going to heat it up a little bit. And then we will at some point flip and add more color and we can layer some of this color in the same spots to make it more intense so that works well and then we'll have to see what i think about oh I like that. I may end up wanting it to be more concentrated. But I'm really enjoying these greens all layered together.
And there will be some on the other side as well. And I'm gonna bring some pink in to here. I'm not sure how much white I really want there, but I'm gonna try to start do like a less is more approach to that aspect. And I'm gonna give it some time, let some of this start to strike. Um, but as I mix more, I can, I'm gonna just rinse out the syringe. Oh, there's like nothing in it. Um, but as I um, mix more, we might build up these colors more still. And I will, hmm. Yeah, as we mix more, I might, um, we'll probably flip at least twice to just build up. I don't know how deep these colors are going. I think that this is our flamingo pink. And the barely there. I don't know if I'm going to bring in any reds or just have like a, some hints of the lightest pink in that to sort of be our, that rind um, going in. But I didn't want it to just be white. So um, let me see. Yeah, I, I wanted the water level to be low enough that the colors wouldn't move very much. Um, and yeah, but I am going to start For mixing up more, I'm coming in. I don't mind really if there's white left here, but I also would like to, I think I want more, if there's white, I want it to be like really, really subtle. I'm having a lot of fun with this. And so there's definitely bleed from here to part of that color. So we may end up adding more green like in that area. I don't know. We'll sort of, we're letting this evolve. <laughs> we're gonna let it evolve. Uh, let's see. Gonna mix up some more. I mean, I made a lot of all of this yarn, or sorry, all this dye. So the problem will not be running out of dye. And then as I mix these, I am just testing them. Over on my mop. Which of course you guys can't really see on camera right there. Yeah, some of the, the yellows are, are spreading a bit, but, oh, I need my, ooh, where would you be? Hmm. Little spoon. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, that's really not bad. Most of this has 
has struck. Okay. We are going to flip Ooh, the colors have actually like penetrated pretty far. I think because I have the spread out enough, uh, I think that that is pretty, pretty good. I do want to build up the color more over here for sure. And then this one, I want to still some of that same region and section, but there. So this is the problem with doing, if I really wanted to make sure there was no spread, I could have done this in two separate pans. But I'm doing one pan so that way I can try to do the whole thing in the live stream. Is the uh, goal and the plan. Okay, let's see. Um, uh, David, yeah, you've missed a lot of the green. We're, we've got lots of, we're doing, we're starting with the rind of the watermelon and then the, um, I guess the interior space. But yeah, we're starting with the greenest part. Um, yeah, Amy, I'm doing a five mini skein fade set. So I here I'll bring over the picture. So I am starting with a uh, the rind that is going to be this more green and going into this like speckly area, and then the next pan that I do will be the the pinks. So that is my, uh, and then hopefully, hope oh dear, hopefully everything will feel like it fits and I won't um, and I won't just uh, dump dial over myself. See that might spread around but that's okay. I could inject with the syringe but there's enough um, there is enough uh, yarn here that or enough spread on the yarn that things are striking pretty quickly so the colors that i've got are sour apple chartreuse um, and then some forest green and which one are you yeah so there's not very much color in this one, but then I'm going to go from like pinks to red. And so try to pull that in, but the, that pan will be more crowded. And then we'll have seeds on the other section. So some of these pinks are really barely going to show up. And each of these bundles is 100 grams of yarn. Oh, I need some forest. Okay, and I'm going to give this a minute and then we will come and adjust more as needed. <laughs> no worries. I just showed your yarn to Hubs and he got excited because he remembered we had a watermelon to cut up. <laughs> yeah, all right. Oh, I'm going to need a new pair of gloves because my hands are getting too sweaty. And this is getting quite steamy, so I'm going to reduce the heat. 
I feel like the one I'm most unsure about is that one. Hello. But I am excited. So yeah, I mean, I don't know what I would call that one. This one I definitely call rind. I feel like I've already gone fairly heavy in there. And I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Since gloves are so expensive, when my hands get too sweaty in a pair, I rinse them off and then save them and then swap between different different ones. All right, but the nice thing is that we can always like come back and revisit. So I need to remind myself of that. still some I don't want to lift this up quite yet some greeny bits but I can move and apply more dye in some of these spots while we wait actually I'll put them up there and Chartreuse. Actually, let's just go ahead and pour you. And I do have on the counter, um, and I'll I'll show this guy again. Um, nope. Hi. There we go. I've got this uh, spot where I am working and playing with the different colors as I do my dilutions. And that is, this is my chartreuse. That might be too much. And we're dripping. Dharma bottles, get it together. All right. This is probably why it's good to use syringes versus the bottles. All right, so then I can come in, take a little bit, and check the color um, here on this mop and say, oh, okay, that's good, or I wish it was darker and whatnot. And I'm feeling like I have mixed way too much of these stocks but these are all colors i like and want to play with so we might have uh there we go that's good a lot of watermelon yarn hitting the shop but i thought it would be just another fun single skein and then i'll add some like black to this one uh as we go yes forest green does look fairly teal and I don't think these cameras are good at picking up blues. But when I did the original swatch, part of the reason why I liked it and picked it is because the chartreuse is so yellow, as is the green apple that I thought. And I believe that this is this to be true. I thought that it would um, play to play with them really well and sort of be a little less teal but then also sometimes that's a color you do see uh in your watermelons so i wasn't sure with the best way to do multicolored yarn like this uh i considered doing some like more hand painting on the countertop but i really wanted to i really wanted to be able to build it up and i think that if you have too much 
if I had too much, uh, sorry, I keep blinking. If I had too much liquid, then that becomes really, really hard. So, oh, I should grab the chartreuse. Yeah, so I'm still today just dying by feel, but letting the forest green and sour apple tone down the more neon aspect of the chartreuse, which is something that we may, and I'm just gonna pour some of this now. We may go back to the chartreuse depending on timing and do like a bright version of a watermelon that I would use chartreuse and pink orchid, I think. Uh, yeah, I do think I want a little bit more. So you're mostly doing dots, but in some areas, it's okay to do a line because you know that it's going across multiple strands and that is okay. So it'll move. There. Okay, I'm gonna give that a minute. Now, if I had like a divide, a way to divide the pan, that would have been uh, great. <laughs> that would have been great and uh, helpful, but that is not something that I really had. Let's not dump anything on the floor, Rebecca. I really like this rind colorway. I'm not sure about this one, but uh, we'll, we'll go with it and I can always augment it. <laughs> I can always do like more chartreuse and change it from being mostly white and give like part of it more of a green backdrop if needed. But yeah, this I'm, I'm living for. Uh, Spearmint Breeze, I wonder, that color I feel like shifts for some people, but I don't remember. Let's see, I don't mind. There we go. I really, really like this. Give that a minute and then I'll swap again. How are we doing here? I 
that will keep the same pink energy. Okay, we're close. We're close. I think we're pretty good. All right, I am having trouble seeing in these gloves. My hands are super sweaty. Oh dear. But I'm glad this camera is working. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna set a timer for 15 minutes. Uh, and I guess there's enough liquid in here, but we may as well just add a little bit of acid. That's pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to let this heat for 15 minutes, and then we will start... And then I, because initially I thought I might just swap and use an entirely new pan, but I think what I might do is after 15 minutes, I am going to remove this, set it aside, and then we'll bring in the 300 grams to start doing the more flesh. And there, the plan is to really start with some of these light pinks and then move into more of a watermelon red. That is my plan for this um, mini skein set. Okay. Ready to go. And I have not yet decided how we will deal with, uh, I've not yet decided how we're going to deal with the speckles. If I want to do, I mean, I, the problem is I don't want a lot of spread. So we'll have to see. It's possible that I'll dye it. Then we'll remove the yarn and do the black, like very, very low, like hand painted and then stained. So that's an option. Hello. So yeah, we're just dealing with, oh, you can't see my pointer, the like sliver, the bottoms, excuse me, sliver, let me see. Um. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's like part one. And yeah, I have no idea how far <laughs> we'll get, how far we'll go, but we're gonna try. Um, and actually, hmm, I could bring out the other pan and we could do, uh, we could do bright rainbow. Eh, I'll wait, I'll wait. Um, so I think I want to do like a really bright rainbow on the zebra yarn. Cause I think that that would be really, really fun. <laughs> um, Ooh, it is hot in here. Oh, I should set my um thermostat. It raised it because we were cold. All right, I think what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna take a brief break. Uh, I'm gonna take a brief break and I'm gonna go find something to drink. Uh, I will put in a ad break. You may or may not see an ad. Don't worry if you don't. Um, but then uh, I'll be back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
much to see if I had a uh, watermelon hint water on hand. So I can try to be on theme. Oof. <laughs> I sat down real hard. Oh, I sat down real hard. All right. I love the rind so much. I feel like for, oh, there we go. I feel like for like the fruit area, I'm gonna want to do larger splotches of color, but I'm not sure. So we'll see. I'm excited though. I'm very, very excited. And so, while I have your attention, uh, please make sure you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I post at least two new videos every single week, and we have a lot of fun exploring color and yarn. Uh, and also, uh, while you're at it, give the video a thumbs up and smash the bell icon so you can be notified when I release a new video or do a live stream. Um, so in your app, you can get push notifications on your phone or turn off push notifications and just get in-app notifications. Uh, there's what many settings that you can customize about that. But yeah, we've had a uh, quite stormy weekend. Oh, it is really hot in here. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm glad I'm not wearing um, my, my respirator, but like the house, like the temperature inside just goes up and up and up when I'm doing, doing this, so. <laughs> it is, dyeing yarn is a lot of fun. And you know, I, I've talked about this before, but the way I got started dyeing yarn was because I had too much white yarn left over from a project and I'm like, I don't want to spend the next five years only knitting white projects. I don't have that much stuff to knit out of this fisherman's white yarn. So I googled how to dye yarn at home and found out you could dye yarn with Kool-Aid. And so then I ran to the grocery store, which I was about a five minute walk from a grocery store. I ran to the grocery store, got all the colors they had, and the rest is history. <laughs> I didn't start filming it for a while though, but yeah. Uh, I feel like it would make a paste. I don't like powdered, powdered gloves. Uh, I, yeah, I think that it's more the issue is if I like adjust the glove, then the problem is it gets stuck and I can't like put it back on, but I just let them dry and then I can use them another day. <laughs> Salt on your watermelon. Well, okay, but if it's like a watermelon and feta salad, I don't know if I've added salt to the watermelon itself, but feta cheese has, is salty, so I enjoy that. Um, but I have not done, so Beth started some like controversial watermelon questions. I have not tried the like, like, I, I don't have TikTok. I don't really watch TikTok, but I've heard about the like, mustard on watermelon challenge. I haven't tried that though. <laughs> oh. But I, I really like watermelon. I don't like having like it go bad though. So, oh my gosh. So there was a time when we decided to try to make a, a vodka watermelon. <laughs> This was like, we, we had graduated college, and so like we cut a hole open in the watermelon and stuck a jug of vodka like, down in it, and it, there was nowhere for the liquid to go. I think we needed a hole at the bottom of the, I don't know. We just ended up with like mostly a normal watermelon, but there were a few bites. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Beth, you only eat two fruits? Well, but see, things like peppers are technically fruits, and cucumbers are fruit, and things like that. Watermelon salsa? Ooh. Yeah, that would be pretty good. I, I enjoy sweet and salty things. I like 
salt on on food. Oh, I finally set up my Instapot. I bought it not this most recent Christmas. I bought it for myself. Sometimes I buy myself presents and then I give them to Keith and I'm like, here, this is a present for me. You decide when to give it to me. He's also very creative. It comes up with gifts as well. But uh, sometimes I'm like, if there's something I want and I know specifically what I want, uh, I'll, I'm like, it was on sale at Costco, so I got it. But I hadn't set it up. And then I was too overwhelmed to set it up. And so we finally set it up and used it. And I'm like, OK. Uh, I go through phases with like slow cooker stuff. So I'm excited to go into a uh, less slow cooker phase again. Lime on watermelon, mmm. Mint with watermelon, mmm. I like like watermelon margaritas and watermelon mojitos, and so, uh, yeah. But I'm not planning on using my Instapot to dye yarn because it's gonna be for food. I need like a timer camera, but I don't think my computer can handle a fourth camera. And today, I can't use my mouse. So I'm having to use the trackpad, which is awkward. <laughs> but I did get all three cameras set up, so I'm really glad about that. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but the Instapot, like, was, I mean, I used, like, a some random kit that I had in the freezer for it that was, like, okay, this was just probably the easiest thing I could do to start with. But, yeah, I mean... The problem that I have with the crock pot is that there are a lot of recipes that sound really good, but then the flavors get so, even if I double the spice in them, the, the flavors end up feeling too watery in the end. And so I'm hoping that maybe this will be different. Ooh, you know what I like with cantaloupe? Prosciutto wrapped cantaloupe is incredible. Incredible. Um, that was something that we had a lot when we were on Italy, when we were in Italy, oh gosh, 11 years ago, just, just about a little over 11 years ago when we did a, we did, did a Venice to Rome cruise, which was incredible. And oh my gosh, the food was amazing. Oh no, Melda the Nala slow cooker. <laughs> You're a picky eater. You should have clarified that watermelon and apple are the two you eat in natural form. You'll drink juices. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that, that's, that's reasonable. That's totally reasonable to not like things. Uh, yeah. I, I'm fairly adventurous with what I'll eat. I will try just about anything once. Like, in part of that cruise, like, I had some, like, well, I've had octopus as sushi, but I had some like octopus dish in Croatia because that was something that they were like raving about that ended up being too huge. And so then I'm like, I couldn't eat very much because the portion was so big. And then I was like, I don't want the chef to think that I don't like it. <laughs> it's that I can't physically consume that much. And the other people at the table didn't want to help me. <laughs> it was really good though. But all right, I'm going to stop talking about food, and I'm going to go look at the stove. See how we're doing with our rind. European cantaloupe and American cantaloupe are two totally different animals. Huh. I just remember that when we came back from Italy, we did, oh, we did an olive oil tasting. Uh... Yeah, we did an olive oil tasting and we brought some of that fancy olive oil back and we brought like, then we did like a whole dinner for our friends. I used to make my own pasta, pre-kids. <laughs> Ooh, yellow watermelon. I think at my baby shower, But maybe I didn't eat it because I was like being careful of soft cheeses. But my mother-in-law had like this gorgeous like checkered watermelon and feta salad. And I was like, oh, I want, but I can't. I was very 
very strict. All right, the timer is about to go off. I would, I'm going to turn off the heat. And so this, my friends, is rind. And this is the part that nobody wants to eat. <laughs> the little bit that's left. Uh, <laughs> That's not quite rind, but sometimes you leave too much red because you just don't want to eat it. All right. Okay, and now coming in, that one has a black thread in it too. Uh, we're going to have 100 grams. Two hundred grams, and again, I'm planning on flipping multiple times, and we'll build up the color. This time, I'm planning to do more pours. I think. Okay, three hundred grams, but I want how hot? Okay, not that hot. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, so the red that I decided is my favorite is poinsettia, poinsettia. And then, uh-oh, did that freeze? It froze. Did the audio freeze? No. Okay, that froze. Thanks, Beth. <laughs> okay. So I just added 300 grams of yarn. I did not remove any liquid and can't start dyeing yet. So that's good. So I also have some cherry bomb, but I think I liked the poinsettia color better. And I want to remind myself I want this one to be mostly pink. That one to be mostly red. Okay. Um, I'm going to need to make some more of the red. Oh, dear. That lid was not on. Get some water. The reds are pretty intense on their own. Still, probably a little intense. So, I'm going to come with a syringe and add just some bits of it. But this top one, I want to mostly be red. And there are pluses and minuses to doing uh, colorways all in one pan like this, in that there's going to be bleed and shift between them. But I am okay with that and see that'll spread and give us some nice pinks And 
And we've got some uh, flamingo pink here as well. Oh, let's turn on the heat. So we can start absorbing. On camera, whew, on camera that's looking not red. That looks hot pink on camera. Let me see if I can shift that because that is not accurate. That is, wait, why did we just freeze? Okay, deactivate, activate. Nope, deactivate. Should be good now. I don't know why. No. I don't know why. The color is looking really pink on camera. It is not that pink in person. like trying to, to shift it like what I see looks hot pink and here I see it's probably because there's so much red uh I think this is a time when I need to post it on Instagram stories even that's looking like more orange than it is there we go Share. Come on, share. No. Share to Instagram stories. Stories. Okay, I am going to, that's pretty good actually. I feel like like last time we are gonna do this layering in multiple stages. So I'm not that worried about it. And then we might do some countertop speckles. I'm still a little undecided on that. But I do need to mix more of my colors for this. Um, Woohoo! Okay. I'll reduce the heat and Come over to the counter. All right. Uh, oh, I've got a lot of pink, but I wanted to. That's probably too much. Pink and then the red. Where's my syringe? leave you on the stove okay let's see 
how we're doing over here. Okay. We're going to check this red. That's pretty good. Going to check the pink. That's pretty good. And I want to get the other pink. But actually, I feel like I want some of the flamingo pink on its own. So let's check the straight 1% stock of flamingo pink again. Oh, hmm, I'll add some water. Actually, no, I'm not. Let's go for it. Oh, wait, I'm going to change views. <laughs> and I'll make sure that the other camera is working. Okay, I see steam. So that's a good sign. Is that good? Soften a bit. I love it when I do something and then I change my mind. Oh, it did shift. I dilute you a lot. very much more pink. Now we can have more red in there. This is my first time using poinsettia as a color and I'm curious to hear what you think. Oh, it froze again. Oh man. Sorry. I was just grooving. I was grooving and I didn't check the chat. I wish the colors came through better. Go to the Instagram stories. Like, that's red. This is pink. It all looks magenta on the camera. It's awful. And I don't know how to fix it. I think this doesn't like steam. Uh, the nice thing about everything being so pink in here. is that, and you know, on this one, it's okay if there's a little white. The nice thing about everything being so pink is that you can lift things up before they have set completely, and that is not a problem. But this is getting pretty good. Uh, maybe we're gonna put you this way. Okay. Yeah, the I don't know what it is about that camera. Maybe I should just replace it as well. Or really swap with Keith because he uh, I gave him one of my old ones.
or not even an old one, but I gave Keith one of my um, syringe. I gave Keith one of my webcams to use for Zoom. See, this is the problem with using a syringe. I want to like, I want there to be tonal, but I want it to move through. And some, some spots of red on this pink. There we go. And give you the pink orchid is pretty bright. I think works. Like I diluted it once, then I'm diluting that dilution. So. All right. I am really, really enjoying this. And again, I don't yet know how we're going to deal with the black speckles, but. We are going to move see this one I don't really want white over here I want I don't mind there being some white down there but I'd like there to be not be white there and Yeah. We'll definitely have to check under there. Okay, I like what we're doing. Let's do I hate that it's coming. Let me see if I can. I tried once, but I don't know. I don't know how to make this come through better. I mean, like this looks like cherry, that end looks like cherry koi. So. Off, 
I love our little, it's funny, this camera looks more orange. And do, I like need to average the two together. They're the same brand, technically different cameras. So, oh, hello. <laughs> Here I am. I, oh, I think I had to like desatch, like my face is like bright red. Um, well, this is the other reason why I try to do recaps because I feel like during the live stream, you can't always tell the, what the actual color is. And so, and plus like what really matters is the finished dry yarn, but it just, I spent so much time like picking the colors that I really wanted it to come through, but all right, I'm going to go back. One Rebecca fact, this camera is called a tennis ball. So, and actually I'm going to make sure I can see the theme. Yes, I can. <laughs> and it's called tennis ball because I have a tennis ball sticker on it. Okay. So I think just like maybe it, that's pretty good though. How about you? Not bad. Let's check inside by the tie. Okay. But overall, not bad and some lightness isn't a bad thing even uh i need my gloves okay i got real ambitious today <laughs> I'm like, this is one colorway, but actually it's five colorways. <laughs> worth it though, worth it. Syringe. Jack, yeah, you're good. It's okay if you're a little too much. Okay, so I'm curious what you guys are going to think about this, but I think when it comes time to speckle, I want to think I might have no black on this section right here, then have some black here and more, or maybe more in the middle and fewer on the red. Let me know what you think. Because the seeds usually are not all in. Oh, this is pretty. And that'll also differentiate these three a bit. No, don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. Well, actually, I could add a little bit of. Do I have pink left? Uh, oh, what about you? see how you are. You that I have not used. Yeah. Okay. There's a little bit of some cherry bomb. Uh, and all right, I'm going to let this sit not for very long. 
but then we'll let it cool before we speckle. So more, more speckles here and fewer there and none there, I guess is what I think my gut says. I'm really excited to take a picture of all of these together. I wouldn't worry about getting the middle section free of white. Sometimes there's little streaks. Yeah, I wasn't that worried. I just wanted to make sure that this felt different. Um, a little darker from the bottom one. So, uh, but if you're just tuning in, this is our fruit and here is our rind. I like it. Oh, Indy, you sound Whoa, dude. Oh, I like that. Okay, I need to get a, oh dear. Try not to burn myself. Of course, it's looking too pink still on this, but give you five more minutes. Okay, and I'm going to share this to my Instagram stories as well. Uh, so then you can see a bit of our progression. Uh, there we go. Cool. All right, that's going to the stories. And then, wait, do I not have another? I do have another. Another pan. So I think what's gonna happen next is we're gonna remove these and then we're gonna do a bright, uh, and then we'll do a bright, uh, bright watermelon using uh, the non-superwash yarn. Okay. That is pineapple. I can still test on my little swatch friend. Do, 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 do. Give it up a little bit. Okay. I am still going strong. Oh no, that fingers. Okay, let's go to the countertop. Nope. That one. <laughs> All right. And using this to check the colors I'm diluting is both creating a very fun watermelon -y yarn, but also is just super, super helpful. So I think, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna have white in there. I definitely want green and I definitely want the pink. Let's just go for it. Let's go for it. We're going to do, I don't even know if this puts on camera. That's a lot of chartreuse. And Pink Orchid feels like a color that is not perfect in solution. <laughs> it uh, definitely is looking a little cloudy. All right, and then I'm gonna fill those with water. And then we can check the intensity. 
And I did not bring the chat over, so I'm breaking my own rule, but let's see. That is quite intense. That is what I want. That is also quite intense. That is what I want. Perfect. Okay, so I'd say these are about like one to three or one to four dilutions of those dye socks. Looking at the picture. Yay! I'm so glad you like the IG picture. Thanks, Lisa. Good night. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm really excited, like, and I'm really, really happy that, like, because initially I sketched this, and I don't think it froze. No, it didn't freeze. Okay, so initially I sketched this, and I thought I would do a soft blank, and then I just started playing around with different colors, and then it occurred to me to do something like this, and that got me really excited and you know i i don't have them pre-soaking but i do have some soft blanks on hand but i don't think i'm going to use them so okay the timer is about to go off i'm going to turn off the heat oops is our pinkest. We don't need them to be completely cool, but I want them to be cool enough that I can speckle. But the thing I'm not sure is if the 1% stock of Dharma True Black is going to be deep enough. I have like a tiny bit of a 2%. But probably not enough. So okay. Wahoo. Okay, so we've got our fruit of the oh wrong camera. Rebecca. Oh dear. Tempted to die along with a couple double strand soft blanks and make watermelon socks. Yeah. Um, oh wait, make sure there's a camera. Yes, okay, things are moving with the camera. All right. Uh, we've got a rogue mini red piece. There is a tiny tinge of pink in there, but here's the yarn. Uh, and it is very pretty and yeah, exactly what I wanted. I don't think I can hold that with two hands. Okay, so that's going to start cooling. Now I'm going to grab our zebra carefully. So I showed this off at the beginning, but Wolf of Dye Force Zebra yarn is just amazing. It is so fun. It is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. So this is non-superwash. And what we've got is just, there's black in here already. And I want to go bright and do a very abstract watermelon. Oh, the fade in a semi-circle shawl. Woo, that would be amazing. Okay, so what I don't know, I don't know how much the colors will spread. I don't know if I'm gonna leave white in between, but we will uh, okay, the heat is currently off, but it's definitely hot. I'm pouring and moving the dye through. It may 
go all the way through to the other side, but it also might not. Uh, but it should go through a few layers of the yarn at least. There's enough liquid in here. And since this yarn is not superwash, it's not gonna strike as quickly. The color won't strike nearly as quickly as it would if we had uh, a superwash yarn. And there is a superwash version of this kind of colorway. So as I'm pouring the dye in, focusing mainly on the ends, but I'm moving it through. And this time it's looking pink and it's accurate. Like I'm using pink orchid. This is a bright pink. And I'm starting down there and slowly moving towards the green. And I'm now gonna turn the heat back on and one, two, three, four tablespoons of white vinegar. Um, this is your first time actually dying along with you. Oh yeah, you have a dedicated dye space. Um, how late do I stay up after these dye longs cleaning up? <laughs> I usually clean up the next day. Um, often when I stop the dye along, sometimes there'll still be stuff cooling on the stove. So I will get any dry powders put away, dye stocks put away in safe areas. But then I uh, go to bed. Yeah, I, because usually by the time I finish, I am done, done, done. So if these spread into each other, I think I'll be okay with that. But Yeah, I mean, this is definitely the greens traveling up, the pinks traveling back. Yeah, it's going to take more time for things to set here. And so sometimes with this yarn base in the past, I've set it up, let it sit overnight, and then that's like a big part of it. So we will see. We are hot. I'm going to give it uh, 15 minutes. And then we'll come back and check. Our yarn is cooling nicely. I'm going to move the two colors. I'm going to want to speckle because that is still quite warm. I'm let that cool some more. And we're going to come over here to the counter. Okay. Let's see how this mop is going. Cause I think she's pretty good. She's doing very well. I think we've got a little bit of some green that I can add there. And where is my syringe? I can go ahead and add just a little bit more of that there. But now what I want to do is I'm like, do I, no, I'll rinse out a cup first. This will be like a test, right? I'm going to take some 1% true black. And the problem Oh dear. Okay. The problem that I have with this is that the Derma squeeze bottles are incredible um, with their thin tips, but they don't always squirt that well. So what I want to see is if with the syringe, Yeah, I can do nice polka dots. I think that's pretty.
pretty. Making sure you guys are on the right camera. I mean, some of these are going to spread a bit, but if I squeezed out more water, then they wouldn't spread as much. <laughs> okay, and I think I'm going to go steam set this now. If I can get some lid over here. Oh, come on, Rebecca. The other yarn up also, which I barely used, but I'm going to place this in my steamer basket and steam set it for 30 minutes. Okay, there's 11 minutes on the timer, so I will do an additional 20 after that. to do some cleaning up so we can speckle once these guys are ready. And I'll, I think I'll squeeze out more liquid from them. Let me see. Um, you don't know if it's a weird question. If you were to take a yarn with a protein in a plant base, would you be able to dye it with acid dyes or food coloring? Uh, yes, it's just that the plant parts would get stained versus dyed. Uh, if you search my channel for Galileo, then, uh, um, am I on the counter? I am, okay. If you search my channel for Galileo, then you will, uh, find some find some stuff. I don't know which color you are. So we'll put you in the everything bucket. You pink, what we need, the black is what we need. These can be rinsed. This can be put there. Rinsed. Ooh, stove top is looking good. And looks like we're actually clearing some. Well, maybe not the chartreuse though. Oh, bummer. The positive of the zebra yarn is that things can um, usually clear overnight, but the negative is then like, okay, then I might have to wait and dye the other side until tomorrow. And my shower curtain gets more and more and more stained the more we do things. But I suppose... We may need to wait for this steamer basket to add some big speckles onto the yarn. All right, so I think what I am going to do now, uh, I think I am, I think I'm gonna send you guys to a brief 
commercial break. Uh, and I'm going to take a brief break myself and then uh, we will chat. So feel free to leave lots of questions and I'll go through and see if there's anything I missed. If there's something I missed earlier, feel free to drop it again. Oh, I'm not in focus. Oh, you know what I need to do though? Turn that audio back on. I don't know where my phone is. And I can't see the chat. <laughs> oh, I was trying to use the mouse. Okay, but I should make sure my phone isn't next to the. Okay, good. We're not on the hot, excuse me. Okay, so, um, yeah, so as I said, Sandy, um, I think that I died, so Galileo I think is 50-50, um, 50-50 viscose from bamboo, 50% merino, maybe superwash merino. And you definitely get something that feels, it feels almost more iridescent than heathered because I think that the bamboo takes up a tiny bit of a stain when, so it's not like a stark white against the other color. Um, so it's really, really pretty. Uh, I've also dyed some wool cotton blends. I don't know with what dyes I've done. I feel like I've done it at least once. You hope I have more green? Yeah, I plan to um, I plan to add more. There we go. Um, I do plan to add more. I think that the green is actually I've desaturated it. There is more. The pink is sort of overwhelming. I think there's a more green for sure. Um, so yes, there will be more green. Um, but I had to like in order for the Right, so show up, I had to desaturate all the colors a little bit. Um, the zebra base is incredible. It seems to work for like just about every <laughs> dialogue I want to do. I'm like, oh, let's do a version on this base. <laughs> I think that the zebra base lends itself really well to more subtle colorways. Oh, the camera totally froze. Tennis ball, I'm gonna replace you. Yeah, so the colors are spread as it's like, I can't focus, it is too steamy. Uh, yeah, the zebra base is incredible. I have a fair number in, um, uh, in a superwash version as well. And oh, speaking of, there is a chance I might be able to do the uh, 10 million view celebration live stream on Thursday. 
I don't want to make any promises, but there's a chance that I might stream a lot of the day, like as much as I possibly can. Um, because, yeah, my husband might remove children from my house, from our house for the day. So uh, we'll see. I don't want to promise anything, but otherwise, like, I wouldn't be able to do all day, but when they're at camp sometime, I'll do a bunch. So, yeah. And I'm planning on trying to create some, like, very, like, Rebecca celebration type colorways. So I've got a few bases that uh, could be good for that. So, yeah, so stay tuned. <laughs> but we haven't decided for sure if, if they're going to um, clear out for a day so I can make a mess. <laughs> um, all right, but I want to go uh, check. Yay, I love when I still see bubbles. Oh, the green definitely has spread. See, there is still a lot of chartreuse that hasn't bound. And the pink has. Pink orchid. Pink orchid, I'm a fan. So, hmm. The good news is that it's penetrating to the other side, okay. So that's good. What about the pink? Yeah. I mean, this is the nice thing about having more full immersion and having a non superwash yarn. It really, really allows you to um, take advantage of that. Okay, I have more pink mix, but not more green. I need gloves. You know, playing with reds and greens, like, as a Jewish girl, <laughs> I'm often concerned about it feeling Christmas. Um, but I, I know that people are like, oh, you know, like, this I don't think is Christmas. Um, but... Yeah, a lot of times when I'm thinking about things, I'm like, is this too Christmas? So. And actually. Okay, those seats are doing well. I'm just going to want to make sure to be like real sparing with them. Um, what I'm going to do. I have so many of these colors left. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of green, pink, and red uh, and stuff coming up. I just grabbed a little bit of sour apple to just add a little bit of a deeper green down towards this very edge. So I thought that would be fun. Now prepping pink and red yarn. Would it be advantageous to have Keith or someone else read the chat aloud to me on the streams? Um, <laughs> Probably, but I think it would be hard to get them to do it. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> oh man, I think it'd be hard to get like he's he's working right now too. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean sometimes like well sometimes he keeps an eye on the the chat just for like mod purposes, but. Oh, let me get switched to the camera. There we go. Oh, and I'm going to need to seriously move over the camera. Actually, this shouldn't be that hard. I can move these over. Okay, Summer of Watermelon. You need to get a hold of the zebra base. It's amazing. It's so amazing. Um, Gretchen wanted to know, am I going to do a special order yarn for the 10 million celebration stream? Potentially. Uh, I just found out that Thursday would be an option for them to go, like, to go um, see my in-laws on, like, today. So um, timing depends a little bit, but yes, likely. So I don't know if it'll be in advance of the stream or during the stream. If that makes sense. Okay. I'm liking that. So now, and I can barely see the chat. Okay. Now, the middle, this middle more pink area is going to get more seeds. And there's going to only be a few seeds in the more red. So for the red, I'm actually going to lean it over to like really spread it out. I'm nervous. I did squeeze out water. What I have to remember though, is that these are five different mini skeins in here. So I'm hoping, and of course that might be a little heavier than I thought I was gonna do. I'm hoping to get some black on each of them. This is just straight 1% true black. trying to not like squish the yarn. So there's going to be a fleshy part with no seeds, heavier seeds, and then lighter seeds. We're going to do a little bit more. So 
So these are definitely spreading some, but that's okay. Okay, I think I want to get these on the heat, but I still want the other two uh, steam a little more. So, uh, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take the yarn out of the steamer basket that's in there. And it needs about 12 more minutes. It'll go back in the steamer basket in a little while. And I'm going to go put these in the steamer basket right now. So I don't want to give them too much time for these colors to spread. And you know, the other ones were in there for 20 minutes. That's probably good. It'll stay hot for a while longer. They may not need to go back in, but, uh, and while I'm over here, yeah, the green is gonna need like all night. I just added some more vinegar to it. The green will need to cool off all night. Yes, this camera um, is showing less of the blues and the other camera is showing more pinks. It's really weird. I wish that like, I wish I could really go in with my software to the balance. Um, but, okay, this, oh dear. <laughs> it's like focus on me camera uh this is gonna look really awesome with the black it already looks great and it's not done yet thank you thank you i am really really excited um yeah really really excited no someday well the i can't quite afford to hire someone else yet um because <laughs> i'm yeah, I don't make enough to pay a, a salary to someone. Um, but someday I would like to have an assistant um, who could help me with a lot of these things. Uh, part of the problem though with streaming is that I stream at odd hours and sometimes fairly randomly. So, uh, it, but it would be so nice to have someone like on deck, like in charge of the swapping the cameras and in charge of the computer because then like for example i could not sit on the floor i could go somewhere else i don't know i mean i don't mind sitting on the floor uh, but yeah so someday it'd be nice to like there's things that i don't do because it's just me that like it'd be nice to have someone to like maybe not go through the entire closed caption but change like chemnitz the like city in Germany to Chemnitz, my name, <laughs> on all the closed captions and things like that. Oh good, I'm glad you found an eyedropper to do your seeds. I mean, the nice thing is that the seeds are big. And so lately I've been really feeling like, rather than fine speckles, like chunkier speckles, because then when you're knitting with it, you're more likely to see like a full stitch in black which would be very, very cool and very like, very seed-like on whatever you're knitting. So I think that that's pretty fun. <sighs> Did I turn off? No, I didn't turn off the heat on that one yet. It's still going. That's fine. Oh, I'm trying to think. So I do, I do have the Provincial Tweed soaked I didn't end up dyeing it, and I don't think I am going to. Uh, I think that, so I've got the swatch, the swatches, I've got the yarn mop from the swatches, and I'll include that like time lapse that I showed. Actually, I can show it again. Oh, that, right, my mouse isn't connected. Ah, but my swatch card. 
and let's do, oh, it's playing. Yeah, so I'll probably include this time lapse. There we go. I'll include this time lapse of me looking at the greens and the pinks and stuff. Uh, I'll, I will include this in my uh, live stream recap. Um, and so, and I will have a version again that was labeled with all the colors. Uh, so that way you guys can see that. But I did this um, earlier this afternoon because I knew uh, that I wasn't sure which reds and pinks I really wanted to use. I could have just picked any and it would have been fine, but I had a vision of what I wanted and so I want, really wanted to see the colors compare to one another. Uh, but so that worked out really, really nicely. Uh, and so I did that this afternoon and then I made tons of stock solutions, but I didn't want to make, <laughs> I made huge stock solutions because I didn't want to just measure out one or 200 grams because I was like, well, I don't know how much I'm going to do. So I've got like a lot of these reds, a lot, and I've got a lot of these greens. So it wouldn't be a huge surprise if we end up seeing these somewhere else, which is funny because like, I love green. Green is one of my favorite colors, but I don't use red very much. Uh, but anyway, here again are the, um, and this is something that I don't know if you're full screen, if you can read those labels or not. Uh, but the, the, I have the labels on those swatch cards in order that I put them in the pan. So in theory, you could screenshot this and then take a look at that right now. And the benefit of a crude swatch like this isn't necessarily because of like screen color differences. It isn't necessarily the absolute color that you see, but you can compare the colors to each other. And that comparison is really, really valuable to me. Aww. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't think I would want anyone to like, I would want to be able to pay people who work for me. Um, yeah. And so like the, the only thing I would be comfortable with, like with as like an intern or something would be, so my senior year in high school, we did senior projects where we wrote a proposal and then we either shadowed someone in like a field where people did like an improv play and like there were all kinds of it was basically anything that you wanted that was you could be passionate about that you could then write a report about and then give a presentation about and there was a big night and they had everyone do presentations and it was really really fun um, and so i actually did my senior project working as an interpreter in a obstetrics and gynecology clinic in michigan uh, so yeah, somehow me with like high school level Spanish and a dictionary was better than what the nurses and doctors at the clinic could provide. Um, and so, yeah, and th really there were only two times, like there were, there were sometimes on the phone I would try to call, which was really hard, but then there were, um, sometimes people were there with um, kids and stuff who spoke English who let me, um, who actually helped me. They let me try and were very encouraging. And so that was really, really good. Um, but so I learned a lot and then I actually translated the hospital tour for like expecting mothers into Spanish. Uh, and so, yeah, that's, that was my senior project. But anyway, something like that where it was for a limited period of time, if there's like a, you know, a high schooler who, or something, then I would allow that. But I wouldn't want like to do a long term, you know, I would want to have some kind of, I, I would just feel weird having someone work for me for free unless it's my children. <laughs> and then also they do get, uh, well, they don't get compensated for being in a video because usually they ask for that. But if they let decide to let me sell yarn that they dye, then they get some books or Legos out of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, thanks for joining. <laughs>
But yeah, so that's sort of my, you know, I, I would want, uh, yeah, if I truly felt that I was able to give someone like experience or do something educational as like a mentorship, then I would be okay if it like, I would feel okay not paying maybe, but it would have to be like a very like special circumstance. So, um, <laughs> yep, a bad <laughs> translation is better than none. And so, yeah, that's, um, cause originally the clinic like reached out to my Spanish class and had us like translating documents. And so there was a whole, and yeah, I don't know how that's what I decided on instead of, I mean, I could have done, I did also my senior year knit my first sweater. I could have done knitting a sweater as a project. <laughs> that would have been a senior project as well. So, you know, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I'm trying to, yeah, I don't, I don't have a good like five year plan. Oh, thank you, someone. That was really loud. I need to turn my notifications down. Um, I need to figure out my my long term plan. I I hope and I hope to someday have like a dedicated studio space, which then would help. Like, yeah, I'm working out of the home still, so all this stuff would help. But I would love to, I'd love to be able to do like an in person dyeing demonstration or something someday. That would be really awesome. That would be really really awesome. I want to see. Ooh, I love that one. <laughs> oh, but, oh, I can go back to, uh, wait, can I turn that off all the way? Hey, the camera didn't shut down, but we can see, some of those spread a bit, but that's okay. No, we still got some yellow. It's clearing. I'm actually going to turn off the heat here. I'm going to let this cool overnight. And then uh, tomorrow, um, tomorrow I will flip and then decide if I need to dye the other side. Oh, dear. Got all these cups with dye. That's not a situation I like to be in at the end of the day. I do have a big jar of dye that I've been accumulating. Uh, it'll be a leave no dye behind. It's going to be a mystery, probably some mystery red. So. Uh, yeah, Don, I'm amazed that I was allowed to do that. <laughs> um, I did have like an official like volunteer, like, uh, like at the hospital I had like all the paperwork and like tests and stuff done. But yeah, like, yeah, I, I, I am amazed that I was allowed to looking back on it as an adult thinking like I, my qualifications like weren't great. So yeah. Oh, for real mittens. Uh, Yeah, Chemnitz Conference 2022. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it depends on like, you know, and we're like, oh, you know, would we, it depends on if we're gonna like, yeah, like what, where, where we'll be and, and things like that. And so occasionally like I look, but I, I don't know, there's, a, there's a convenience of having something attached to my home for sure. The inconvenience is that separating like work and home can be hard. So there's that, but, uh, <laughs> no, no promises because I don't even know like about venue or like, I have no experience planning any kind of event. Um, <laughs> and not to mention that I have not traveled anywhere myself, <laughs> uh, not just like, or I, I don't, I cannot remember the last time I went somewhere without 
the kids, I think since the kids have been born, I have never gone on a trip without them where Keith was not also with me. So we've gone out of town, the two of us, a handful of times and left the kids behind. But otherwise, uh, yeah, I, I guess otherwise, like pre, yeah, I haven't, I haven't trot, yeah. So I'm hoping in 2022 that I'll at least go to like, I, I don't know which one I would, if I would do Ryan Beck or Vogue Knitting Live in New York or something. So I'm hoping to do one of those, but it's the, uh, getting the, Keith's job does have like some amount of flexibility, but, uh, it depends on what his teaching schedule and stuff is. And so we'll be able to figure it out. But the goal originally was for this year or even last year for me to try to do something. Sponsored by Dharma. <laughs> I don't know if Dharma knows who I am. Oh, Chantel, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you. Thank you so much. And yes, please give a thumbs up. But yeah, I, I doubt I'm on Dharma's radar. <laughs> oh man. Like, you know, it's a, it's a similar thing where like, I doubt I'm on like nitpicks actual radar. I mean, I know like I'm in a nitpicks affiliate, but like I, I, I just have no idea if they like know who I am. <laughs> oh man tables with electric see the problem with a big conference room is that a lot of those spaces are carpeted right and so it would be hard like you couldn't really set something up in a hotel because if there's a spill or a mess then there's like liability with that and so uh yeah that's that's a problem I don't have 10 million followers, not 10 million. I have 10 million views. <laughs> I don't have 10 million followers. If I had 10 million followers, I'd have a big old like trophy from YouTube. <laughs> I only have like, wait, how many am I at? I think I'm at like, I don't want to misspeak. Oh, my mouse doesn't work. I think I'm at, I have 48,000 followers, um, which is, which is a lot, but it's not 10, yeah, I have 10 million video views. That's the 10 million. Uh, you're talking to a Colorado yarn shop and they knew about me? <laughs> I'm like, I get all excited. Uh, I get all excited when like, yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, <laughs> 48.1, sure. <laughs> it's been growing. And I mean, I'm grateful to all of you that subscribe and support the content here. And I really like, I think like a big, you know, in like big dreams would be to like have some kind of like event. And like, if like, if I go to another conference, like, I mean, I don't think that I'd be like, I mean, I'm, it's not like I've been invited to like, I, I wouldn't be like, a, like, I would be there as just like a regular attendee. Um, and so, because I don't have enough stock to apply to be a vendor at a big festival, like my, the amount of inventory that I have at any given time is so small that like I couldn't fill up a booth. <laughs> like I just, I couldn't. Um, so I wouldn't have like a stall or anything like that. But um, yeah, so I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how anything, if that works. Um... <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Oh man. I am like dying, dying to like for the steamer basket because I want to, I want to take it out and show y'all. Four AM does roll around real quick. Oh, thank you. I think that there's a lot like 
what I real I was really sad that this year I couldn't go. Be I mean, it's reasonable, but when Lucas was in pre K, they had this like community. What do they call it? Commu commu like community helpers or something. And they had parents come in and give like a brief. A presentation of some kind or do an activity based on their jobs and so I went and I brought sprinkles and yarn that was already pre-soaked in vinegar and I had the kids go to town and dye yarn and it was so fun uh, and then I made little coasters for the teachers at the end of the year out of that yarn um, so that was really fun but yeah the uh... <laughs> oh the camera definitely froze but I think right now it doesn't really matter. Oh, I keep going for the mouse. At least there's a new like deactivate button. That's handy. All right, I'm gonna see how much time is on the timer. Oh, 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 good. Okay, we good. Oh dear, we good. So, here's what we're gonna do. Okay, that worked. Oops. doesn't have as many speckles. Okay, so we've got those three. And then those two. And we got a watermelon. Woohoo! I don't think it's all showing up okay, but I promise it's beautiful. So the stoves are all off. That is good. See, I can even turn off that light. <laughs> oh, I can't believe that the light like stopped working and then started working again. Like, that's still like one of the weirdest things I don't understand. Um, ooh, goody, quick question. Anyone have experience with Tough Puff from Knit Picks We Crochet? Yes. It was in your mystery bag. Can it be spun tighter? Uh, I think it would be hard to spin it tighter. Uh, so Top Pop is a super chunky, or is it just chunky? It's a chunky single ply yarn. And the reason it could technically be spun tighter, but the reason why it would be hard to do that is that the thicker your ply is, the less twist it can excuse me, it can really hold. So I've actually knit with Tough Puff a reasonable amount and it works up really, really nicely and I haven't had any issues with it breaking. Uh, and I have dyed it multiple times. I just don't remember quite how often though. So yeah, I, I have some more bare Tough Puff. Where have I dyed it? Uh, let me think. Hmm. It's possible I've only done it in live streams. If I searched for Tough Puff and didn't see it. Okay, so I definitely over dyed it in my um, the live stream 51618. Oh, I dyed an orange for a fox hat. Was that a video? Yes. Okay, here's a video of me dyeing it. Or a blog post. And then, so this is going to be a roundabout way. It's a blog post. 
At the bottom of the blog post is the video. <laughs> See, I searched for Chemnitz Tough Pots and <laughs> saw what came up. Um, has anyone tried food dye from Hobby Lobby brand? Um, no, I have not. I mean, I will say that all food coloring in the United States has the same five, occasionally six molecules. So ultimately, they all work pretty well. It's just some might dissolve better than others. Some might work better with like an icing as a suspension than they will uh, for dyeing yarn. But you never know until you try it. Um, yeah, Jessica, so I had, I bought, there was a big, uh, green sale one year and I bought, they had mint in all the colors. So I bought mint everything. I actually just recently over dyed some of my last mint stroll that I had because I bought a lot because it was really cheap. Uh, and I had some mint tough puff. I may have one more skein of mint tough puff. So I over dyed that a few times. Uh... But yeah, but I, I wouldn't feel the need, like I don't think it broke. The only times I've had single ply yarn break on me is if I'm using it to graft something, if I'm doing like a mattress stiff stitch, because then when you're stitching, you're introducing some twist into it. So if you're stitching the wrong direction, then it can get loose and break. Um, there was like a full circle, like recycled yarn, and I made Keith a sweater out of that once. So, yeah, but anyway, I think, ooh, actually, I'm going to go back to there. How funny, because it's still got one of the cameras behind it. Oh, no, it's playing the video again. Okay, I don't need it to do that. Um... I was like, why is that behind me? <laughs> it was like, oh wait, it's it's doing the whole like dying time lapse. But anyway, thank you all so much for joining me and for participating in these dialogues. If you would like, oh. Nope. There we go. <laughs> If you'd like to potentially be featured in the dialogue recap that will come out in mid-August, uh, just share your dyeing projects on Instagram with the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue, or look for this inspiration photo on the Chemnitz Facebook page. It's just facebook.com slash Chemnitz. Uh, usually I have the dialogue photo as the pinned post and reply there with a photo comment. And if you'd like to share pictures with me privately um, and not be featured, there is a thread in the Chemnitz Lab Facebook group that's pinned under the announcements. And there you can privately share your pictures and everything there doesn't get shared outside the group per group rules. So that's a great way to share things with the community without having like your name and stuff mentioned like in the in the video. Um, but it's just a really fun way to see how many how so many different people interpret one picture one theme one feeling one mood and how we can use that to create colors and i think that it's fun to see how sometimes two people will come up with something that is very very similar independently and sometimes people will come up with things that are vastly different all from the same inspiration photo and so i think that it's a really good uh reminder that Two people can come up with a very, very similar idea independently, um, but also like even if things look very, very similar, there are likely different, very different differences. And so it's always great to pull your inspiration for dyeing yarn from something that isn't a yarn colorway to start with. And so I think that that's something that I personally really recommend is that you look around outside you outside of yarn for inspiration for your colorways. Of course, I invite you to copy me, so feel free to use the same colors and same techniques and stuff that I was doing to create your own version of this, whether you also wanna go for a fade set like me or you want to do something else. But, oh man. Yeah, I, this was <laughs> this was ambitious doing in a live stream a five different color <laughs> fade set, but I did it! Woohoo! <laughs> I'm very excited and very very happy.
happy with how it turned out. And I am not in focus because I'm moving around too much. I would not be a good game streamer. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, if, uh, again, please subscribe, give a thumbs up, and... You know, if you want to support the content here on the channel, I do have an Etsy shop and I have a Patreon. There's links to all of that down in the video description. I also do have links and affiliate links to the yarn, tools, and equipment that I use. So if you want to start dyeing yarn yourself, you can go and check those out. And that's another great way to help support the content you see here. But anyway, I had a blast. I am exhausted. <laughs> I am going to go do some cleanup so that way um, very quickly I can in the morning allow, transition things back into a home kitchen versus a home dining studio. Um, yes, and the replay, sometimes it takes a little bit of time for the replay to be up after a stream, but it should be up pretty quickly. And again, I'm moving too much, so I've gone blurry. <laughs> Oh, I think it is my bedtime, but man, there was a time when I could do some six hour streams. And so maybe we'll, maybe we'll have a really long one, but it would be daytime, but really long one coming up. But all right, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching. Oh, and stay tuned. There's a new episode of Dye Pot Weekly that'll be out tomorrow morning. Good night, everyone. Bye. And again, the mouse, it's not plugged in. <laughs> okay, bye, everyone. <laughs>